All right, guys, hello. So today we want to make a video solely talking about the F1 system on this car and many other Ferraris and supercars for that matter. And we want to clear up some of the misconceptions that are out there. A lot of people say, does it have a clutch? Why do you mention clutch? Um, what, what, what system, how does it work? You know, everything about it. Is it a manual, is it an automatic? A couple of you guys have been debating. Pros and cons. And a lot of, some of you guys have said, oh, that's, that's, it's such a bad system, yada, yada. But actually now that's been completely gone through, it's been uh, pr quite solid so far. So that's what we're gonna be talking about this video. We're gonna hand the technical stuff over to this guy who knows what he's talking yeah. about way more than me. And uh, should be a good little video to inform you on this system. Yeah, and I look forward to uh, informing and maybe teaching a bit, sharing the little bit that I know about it because I'll admit that I was one of the people who, when I would go around Cars and Coffee and look in some of the 355s and 360s and see this like little gear shift thing, I thought it was like the, the, the funniest, the most cheesy thing or whatever inside of Ferrari, so. But yeah. now, now I have a lot more, uh, a lot more respect for it. Actually, to tell you the truth, the uh, the F1 system on the Ferraris. Yeah. So, uh, so the best way to put it would probably be that it is semi-automatic and automated manual, or an automated manual. So there is a full, full automatic button. So I guess you could call it automatic, but but it, it's automated manual because it has this the same exact systems actually as the as the manual gearbox almost the flywheel is like 99% the same people are pretty convinced that they could be interchangeable the flywheel supposedly has like a little bit of a taper to it on the uh, on the F1 cars uh, so the flywheel is pretty much the same the clutch disc pretty much the same and the throwout bearing and all the all the, the the pressure plate and the throwout bearing and all the clutch hydraulics pretty much the same. Only difference is you have a big, uh, not necessarily that big, but a, an F1 pump back there, and it will uh, it'll cycle as soon as you uh, start the car up or maybe just put it on accessory mode. It'll start priming to uh, to maintain a whole lot of pressure. Uh, the guy who was working on the clutch for us said it was something like like 50 bar or something so just could a uh, substantial amount of pressure so uh, so the way it works is it does the clutch pedal for you it will just the exact same as you would do it it'll slip the clutch when it needs to slip the clutch it'll fully disengage it'll re-engage the there's the same thing there's the clutch slave cylinder just like on a manual gearbox sitting sitting right on top of the or on top of the clutch housing and uh, and the pump will have have the clutch fluid ready to be the hydraulic fluid ready to be uh, ready to be used so the most important component is the TCU the transmission control unit and it will actuate solenoids to open and close the valves in the system which will either force break uh, clutch fluid into the into the, the hydraulic system or back out of it. So what gives the TCU most of its information is pretty much just a small magnet on the throwout bearing. And so in used in conjunction with a hall sensor, it'll, it'll be able to know the distance and pretty much the location of the throwout bearing at any time. So whether the throwout bearing is fully against the pressure plate uh, springs or or brought brought back off of it. So whether the so that way it knows whether the clutch is fully engaged, disengaged, or slipping somewhere in between. So uh, that sensor gives pretty much like a lot of almost all the information that you need. So I did a quick little write out of all of the uh, all the acronyms that can of course get confusing with all of them thrown at you at one time. So hopefully you can make those out. And uh, next thing is the torque transmissibility curve. is all about between the point of initial slippage and the point of full clutch close position, full full biting of the clutch. 
and it's just how quickly the the F1 system will let the clutch out in a sense and fully fully put the power down. So I mentioned the point of initial slipping, the PIS. When we were talking about the mechanic who was working on our clutch system, when he kind of mentioned this stuff, we didn't really realize the importance of it, but it is really important when you're calibrating and setting up the clutch to get this just right. So you want the, once the clutch is warmed up, you don't, you don't want to do it on a cold clutch right when you install it because it'll actually change a bit. So drive it around a bit just with it uh, liberally kind of just set up there. Uh, you don't have to be really precise. But then, then once you warm up the clutch, then you got to go throw it up on the lift, take it out, and set up the point of initial slipping. So really, you want the clutch and the pressure plate and the flywheel all to be as close together as you can without having them touching yet. So, so you want that point of initial slipping to be just like su such little distance so that you get quicker, crisper, harder shifts. And uh, the mechanic was telling us this, that, it's, that he set it up really nice and tight for us so that the clutch wear would be minimized and the, the sportiness would be uh, most evident. So also when the mechanic was installing the clutch, it was important for him to look into the clutch degradation index, the CDI, and again, the computer really knows what it's doing and the F1 system was really advanced for its day. And being the first, uh, it's just, it, it amazes me. So it keeps track of the CDI, pretty much how much meat is left on the clutch, how much uh, it's slipping and how firmly it, firmly it's grabbing. So when, when you replace a clutch, you need to reset the CDI for the new clutch because obviously it won't be like the old clutch. So it keeps track of that. It'll keep track of any instances where the clutch is slipping and kind of lower the rating that it has stored for it. So the TCU uses this knowledge of the CDI, Clutch Degradation Index again, as uh, just as another data point. And uh, so the CDI will tell the torque transmissibility curve where to, where to kind of stretch out and stuff because when the, when the clutch has lowered in biting and effectiveness, it's obviously not gonna transmit the torque as well. So, oh, that sounds great. Yeah, sorry, got some subscribers back here. They want me to start it up and rev it, so can't uh, can't deny that. So people behind you think you're leaving. Oh, whoops. So hold on for just a second. company man where was that one coming from oh the Maserati very nice that's all for me guys thank you all right where was I man uh, okay yeah so when the when the clutch has lowered in effectiveness essentially it'll know to kind of stretch out the torque transmissibility curve because when when the clutch has is, isn't as grippy and new it's not going to transmit the torque as well so it knows to adjust for that and account for that and I thought that was just so advanced and pretty amazing and the problem is if you don't account for this when you're installing the new clutch to reset the CDI then uh, it'll still be using that stretched out TTC and it'll just result in increased clutch wear because it's not using the the full bite of the clutch it's expecting that it's going to be not not as grippy so it'll stretch it out and be a little more gentle on it when you don't need it to be when you can just engage the clutch and and minimize the wear on a new clutch so back to setting the point of initial slipping of a new clutch when you install it you want that to be as small as possible so you get less wear just really cr crisp quick sporty shifts and so the way you do that is when you install the new the new clutch hopefully a little warm after driving it a bit because it does change um, you need to uh, you you want it as close as possible without dragging on the flywheel so you bring it closer and closer you bring the clutch tighter and tighter 
Well, technically, you you back off the throwout bearing more and more and more. So the pressure plate is pushing further and further on the clutch, and just you want it just before it hits the flywheel here. So and you'll know as soon as it does hit the flywheel because you can measure the input shaft to the gearbox and there's a sensor for that as well and so it'll keep track of all that and as soon as you see that start to increase then you know you got to back it off just a, just a hair behind that and that keeps it nice and tight and sporty. One uh, complaint that a lot of drivers have on the on the F1 gearboxes is that just kind of like jerky and annoying and because because the car kind of has to, it's hard to anticipate. Like when you're driving a manual transmission, you know what you're gonna want. So you put in the clutch, you take out the clutch, whatever. You you know what you're expecting, but but uh, the system can only really do it based on like the accelerator pedal. So what it does is, uh, depending on how much throttle you've applied, it'll it'll know how fast it wants to close uh, or let out the 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 release bearing, the throwout bearing. So. Uh, so it does that and the problem is the, the reason you get the jerkiness and when you get the jerkiness is because of uh, if you ever put on the throttle a little bit and either pretty much leave it there or worst case let it back off a little bit then what has to happen is the clutch will start going in but then if you just let off just a little bit the clutch will have to disengage and kind of try it again as long as you're below that probably about 1800 rpm that's generally the rule of thumb of when the when the release bearing will be all the way disengaged and the clutch will be fully uh fully against the well the pressure plate will be fully against the clutch against the flywheel so so as long as so to combat this and to fix this as long as you smoothly apply the gas and don't usually just kind of feather it on and off and stuff especially when you're driving slow then uh then that'll that'll uh, combat this and usually fix it and usually make it pretty smooth. We've gotten this car to well to where uh, we're driving it off the line is not, not a problem smooth and, and it feels great. So lastly kind of an overall uh, pretty poor illustration and a little bit exaggerated but uh, so the hall sensor is marked by the star and we actually have the old uh, the old position sensor that that uh, uses the information from this from this little magnet on the throw out bearing here we'll show you that in a bit and uh, so it's all based on that position it's where the TCU gets all of its information all right so here's a few of the used parts that our mechanic left us with we have the pressure plate and the old clutch disc and the release bearing and a couple of the uh, of the sensors that are really hard to get to, so you might as well do them uh, with the clutch job. So, so I pretty much went over it all, but it's good to see it in person. Release bearing, and there's a magnet on this guy that is used in conjunction with this sensor. So it's similar, like on our 944s, we have speed and reference sensors, which uh, are put on top of the flywheel to get the RPM. And I'm sure lots of other cars have it. I know uh, some BMWs of the era, and probably all cars. But uh, so so you can see that there's a magnet in here, and a magnet, or at least this is ferrous. And so uh, and so this will keep track of how far in or out the the release bearing is uh, in relation to the pressure plate to pretty much get the position of whether the clutch is in or out or in the uh, in between slipping so uh, so yeah so it just pushes against here to relieve the pressure plate from the clutch disc in the flywheel and and it comes off of it to let the the pressure plate be back against it and here's the old clutch seems pretty thin I didn't see what the uh, what the new clutch looked like but uh, new clutch disc looked like but we don't have the flywheel because the flywheel was resurfaced. It's a dual mass flywheel. It's pretty expensive. Um, but uh, he was he was really confident. He has a, a really good um, machinist who's been doing those flywheels for a while and can really do a good job uh, resurfacing them and and resealing the the oil seals that I believe are in that flywheel. 
So yeah, so these guys, pretty much the most important two would be these guys over here. This keeps track of the position and that's one of the biggest things for the TCU. The F1 pump that I was talking about, sitting back here and maybe you can catch it right down there in the corner. Yep, that guy. Lots of uh, hydraulic lines running to and from it and making yeah, and their here's way. some of the sensors and lines and it's all down yep. right here there's the sensor was replaced okay so that was the f1 pump sensor it looks like and then there's the housing itself poking out right there all right hopefully that was informative i was certainly interested in how the f1 system works and and i'm really impressed after uh listening to the mechanic talk about it and doing some of my own reading so hopefully that was also a little bit of a visual to what our problem was in the and a couple videos ago, how uh, it was expecting the clutch in the fully closed position and yet it wasn't uh, wasn't picking up that. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, comment what you think of the F1 system, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.